fertilizer. It's the plant food that drives the health and the growth of our plants. But I don't know about you, whenever anyone starts talking about fertilizer, I just tune out. Ratios, nitrogen, minerals. I don't know anything about this stuff and maybe you don't either. So today, I wanna to take the basics of fertilization, boil them down into layman's terms that even I can understand. Then we're gonna do a bit of an experiment to talk about what the optimal approach to fertilizing our plants is and how that affects their growth. So let's jump in, try to make our plants happy and healthy with a bit of knowledge about fertilizer. Now I'm gonna keep this simple today because if I overcomplicate things, I'm gonna lose myself and then I'll no doubt lose you too. But think about plants. At their core, they need three things. They need water, they need sunshine, and they need food, nutrients. For those of us with collections of plants in pots, it's where fertilizer comes in because those plants can't access the naturally occurring nutrients in the soil around us. But not all fertilizers are made equal. They've got different elemental compositions Oh, he's getting complex again. No, let's not do that. Let's not go there. But there are three main elements that fertilizers are comprised of, and we do need to know about them. I'm boiling these down into very simplistic terms. The first is nitrogen, the second is phosphorus, and the third is potassium, and they all have different impacts on plant growth. Nitrogen is all about healthy foliage that photosynthetic material, the greenness of our plants. Plants with lots of leaves, grass, big leafy indoor plants, they need plenty of nitrogen to keep them happy. Cacti, maybe not so much. Phosphorus, on the other hand, is about good healthy root growth through the soil, whereas potassium primarily impacts plant reproduction, flowers and fruits. I know I've oversimplified things. Don't call me out on it, but at its core, that's what we need to know. Now, different plants are gonna like different balances of those three different minerals. There's also, in fertilizers, what we call trace elements. Different elements that plants need, but they don't need them in big amounts. So we won't delve too deeply into that. Let's just call them trace elements for today and leave it there. Now, let's move on and talk about organic versus inorganic fertilizers. Now fertilizers can either be organic or inorganic. Inorganic fertilizer is this sort of thing, essentially chemical salts that can either be diluted in water or they can be in pellet form, like these slow release pellets. The chemicals and the nutrition in inorganic fertilizers are immediately accessible by plants. They don't need to do any work for it as the uh, fertilizer degrades, plants get their roots into it, they suck it up, no problems whatsoever. Organic fertilizers, on the other hand, they come from natural sources. Like in this instance, this is alfalfa meal. Now, organic, it's a buzzword, it sounds fantastic. But the problem with organic fertilizers is they need to be decomposed before the nutrients inside them can be accessed by our plants. In the garden, no problem at all. The things that do the decomposing, like the fungi, the earthworms, bacteria, all those sorts of things, they're all active in the soil around us. And that means the organic fertilizer breaks down quickly and plants can get into it and have a great time. But in pots, unless we're actively fostering healthy living soils, those organic fertilizers can sit there and do nothing. Plants can't access the nutrients, and well, we don't get the benefits from them. So, what's the point of them? That's exactly what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna to be doing an experiment very shortly to see if we can unlock the benefits of organic soils. Now, I hate to do this here, but I really do need to address what makes the best fertilizer for our plants and that means talking about ratios, but I'll keep it quick. You could talk to five different cactus and succulent growers and walk away with five different approaches to fertilizing plants. Some who espouse the value of cow manure, others who rely solely on the mineral decomposition 
of their inorganic soils. Trico bros who piss all over their plants. And by the way, human urine, great source of both nitrogen and phosphorus. So it's no surprise that plants growing well. But I'm not gonna be pissing on any of my plants today. No, absolutely not. But I've gone hunting for what I think is the ideal fertilization regime. And well, first of all, I went to the science, but scientific journals, they're obsessed with crops. They care about the biggest yields of fruit from prickly pears, or what can make the most fodder for grazing plants. None of that's helpful for these, absolutely not. So I've gone to the next most trusted source, and that is old blokes arguing about this stuff on the internet. And well, based on that research, I've got what I reckon is the ideal NPK ratio. I don't wanna bore you with these ratios too much, but here it is. What we're looking for is one gram of nitrogen to 0.4 grams of phosphorus to 1.7 grams of potassium. Or if you're in the United States where they have a very slightly different approach to labeling this stuff, that's a ratio of one gram nitrogen to one gram phosphorus to 1.4 grams of potassium. So, what we're gonna be doing today is conducting a little bit of an experiment to see, well, what works better. Store-bought slow-release fertilizer that's got a ratio that's not quite there, or my own hybrid creation concocted out of all sorts of different organic materials that hopefully I'm gonna be unlocking by creating a nice, rich, living soil. We're gonna see what works best, but first, Real quick word from our sponsor today, me. Do you love cacti and succulents? Maybe you just wanna support Arid Zine on YouTube. Well, follow the link on the screen. You can buy rad shirts like this, sick stickers like this one. And if you're in Australia, sometimes you can even buy weird and wonderful plants and seeds. Anyway, let's get back to regular programming. Welcome back. Now, fundamentally, I am an incredibly lazy plant grower. I don't have time to use liquid fertilizers, diluting all this stuff down and watering it all by hand. No way. All my plants would die before I do that. So today we're gonna to be looking at two different approaches to slow release fertilizers. The commercial product versus my own weird monstrous concoction. So let's introduce the two combatants, shall we? In the red corner, we've got Searle's Robust Cacti and Succulent. Now, I'm not taking any money for this video, but Searles, in my opinion, if you're in Australia, everything they do, good quality, well worth looking into. In the blue corner, we have this wonderful concoction. This is a mix, a blend of organic components. I'll tell you precisely what's in it in a minute. And helping us out, we've got three different species. First of all, this is Trichocereus undulosus relatively recently discovered plant from South America. Columnar, very spiny. Check out that, even as a seedling. Another relatively recently discovered plant. This is Cremnocereus albipelosus. Wonderful, because it's like a little hairy old man. And then thirdly, of horticultural origin, we've got this wonderful hybrid, another Trichocereus. This is a cross of Trichocereus chaliensis with a Trichocereus peruvianus monstrosus. Bit of mutant stuff for you. Now I've got six of each of those plants. Three are gonna get the commercial stuff. Three are gonna get my organic mix. So let's have a look at how this is all gonna play out, shall we? So the terms of this experiment, each of these plants is gonna go from a seven centimeter pot up into a 14 centimeter pot. They're all gonna be potted up in a beautiful well-draining mix, half organic and half inorganic. Crucially, one of the inorganic components is this stuff. It's called zeolite. And what it does, it acts like a bit of a sponge for nutrients. Nutrients pass through the soil and they attach themselves to the zeolite minerals and then they get released over time. So if any of the nutrients would be lost because the water's flowing through the soil or whatever, well, 
we don't have to worry about it because the zeolite's going to be there hanging on to it and letting our plants access it over time. The other thing that's going to be going into all of this soil is a very small dose of mycorrhizal inoculant. This little packet here has got within tiny little spores of all sorts of great little things like fungus and bacteria and that's going to help us to create that living soil that hopefully will enable the plants that are receiving the uh, organic fertilizers to access them. Now we want to keep everything consistent so all the plants are going to get that zeolite, all the plants are going to get that mycorrhizal inoculant and we're also going to make sure so we can test to see if the fertilizer is actually doing anything we're going to have a bit of a control that means that a third of these plants aren't going to get any fertilizer whatsoever so it'll be really interesting in my opinion to see not only which of the fertilizers works best but also are they having any impact whatsoever we're going to run this experiment for six months six months time the end of the sydney growing season we'll check back in and see how these plants are going now let's start with with the uh, inorganic, the slow release, the commercial stuff. We're going to start off by inoculating our soil with delightful fungi and bacteria. One spoonful of this stuff, mix it into the soil that I've got here. And, whoa, don't want to lose that. And we're also going to take two little spoonfuls of the slow release stuff magic chuck that into the soil mix as well i'm mixing each pot up individually because i don't want there to be some pots that have got more or less fertilizer i want this to be as close to as authentic an experiment as we can possibly get all right let's load up this pot now it's full of slow release stuff it's full of good fungi and bacteria get the soil in there and then we'll chuck this plant we'll start off with little mutant trichocereus chuck that in there I'll get my glove on if I can rather than stabbing myself and turning this into a very different kind of video all right get that out of its soil roots are looking pretty good into its new pot I'm not going to get rid of any of the old soil I'll just let it grow out and now we're just going to backfill all of these plants are going to be exposed to the weather they're going to get full sun they're going to get rain if it rains and if it doesn't rain I'll water them twice a week that'll help those nutrients to be unlocked by the living soil and in my opinion using this sort of mix it's what works best for the plants in this climate anyway all right so there we have our first plant now we'll move on to the organic stuff and i'll tell you what's in that strange and wonderful blend that i've concocted we'll mix it up this time we'll pot up one of those little cremno serious furry guys now I've got my organic blend here and you're probably wondering what it is and why I've made it. Well, this commercial stuff that I shared with you doesn't have that ratio that I was talking about earlier. And so what I'm really trying to see here is not only if organic fertilizers can be unlocked, but can we improve on the commercial stuff? So I said that the ideal NPK ratio was 1 to 0 0.4 to 1.7. What I've got here in my concoction is 1 to 0 0.7, a little bit heavy on the phosphorus, to 1.73. Almost that perfect balance though between nitrogen and potassium. Whereas if you look at the commercial stuff, it was closer to 0 0.9 on the potassium side of things. Not nearly enough. Now, what is this stuff as I pour it in? Well, ooh, very dusty. What we've got is a whole blend of different bits and pieces. Sort out because I was able to combine them to create that, well, 
that golden ratio, shall we call it. I guess we'll find out if that's the case a bit later on. Now, again, going back to my little recipe book here, what I've got in each of those little bowls, I've got five small spoon fills. Let me try again. Five small spoonfuls of alfalfa meal. I've also got a bit of this stuff called azomite, which is a powdered mineral, great for trace elements. I've got fish and bone meal. How yeah, good, full of calcium, full of heaps of good stuff in there, like nitrogen and phosphorus. To give me a bit of potassium, kelp meal, few more trace elements. Oh, can I get it out? What we call glacial rock dust. Sounds fancy, couldn't help but include it. And then, just to give me a bit more of a boost on the potassium side of things, I've gone and got my ba myself a bag of potash powder, which is basically straight potassium. Mix it all together, and well, end result is now in here. I'm also gonna, of course, include in my pot fungal and bacterial inoculant in you go mix it all around and we'll pot up the creme serious and of course off screen I'll also do my controls but you don't need to see me do that now in terms of scoring this experiment because it's not just about which plant grows the most I'm not particularly concerned about how much height they put on. That is important, but it's not the sole thing. There are four elements that I'm gonna be scoring these things on. And the most important to me is overall plant health. If I end up with plants with terrible fungal infections or heaven forbid dying, no point if they put on a lot of vertical growth before they get there. So overall plant health is key point. I'm also interested, of course, in the growth rate. I'm also gonna be checking out the spination. As you've seen, with a plant like this one, and also the trichoungulosis, these are spiny plants. And they've got weak spines, what's the point of growing them? So spine growth is gonna be important in this experiment. And then the fourth component is gonna be root health. How well the roots have spread through this pot put it all together with a weighting towards plant health and we'll have our overall victor and it'll be very interesting indeed to see what prevails I've lost my glove well there it is working on a very tiny table today which is making my life incredibly difficult oh come on also working with gloves that are too small so get our cremno serious out of the pot this will probably have smaller roots but We'll find out in a second. There we go. Like I said, smaller roots straight in there. And we're going to backfill this now with soil mixed with organic components. Now, that's pretty much it. So, what I'd love to hear from you is if you've got your own perfect blend, your own perfect recipe for fertilizing your plants, your own approach, or if you've got any questions, please do hit me up in the comments. I'll be back in six months to check up on this experiment. I will be back within the week with another episode, of course. But until then, I'm Michael. This is Aridzine. Happy growing.